Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video guys, we're going to be talking about whether you should use Destroy or Debris in Roblox Studio. So let's get right into it. So I see a lot of people asking on the dev forum and just asking me if you should use Destroy or Debris. We all know what Destroy is. It literally destroys the object. So if I were to say uh, whoops, uh, game.workspace.baseplate destroy and we go into the game it'll be gone see the base plate is gone and what destroy does it's it's very simple it sets the parents the instance parent to nil um it disconnects all the the connections that it has with it so dealing with scripting stuff and it basically it cleans up everything every single thing you would need but there's also debris now if you don't know what debris is i can show you guys um uh i'll show up my screen here okay debris it's um a service and allows the developer to schedule when things are destroyed now notice how it says the removal of the object without yielding any code through the usage oh uh, okay wait, it's down here after the lifetime argument has elapsed in seconds the object it was moved in the same manner in the same manner as instance destroy you have heard it here it uses the same thing destroy it's just what debris does is you can wait a, uh, an amount of seconds before it is destroyed as well if you guys don't know what debris is or how to use it you would get the service debris debris and you would say debris add i oh colon add item all right or er, wait this is add tag add item and what you would put in here is the item you're destroying and the amount of times or not amount of times the um amount of seconds until this is ran so if i put in game.workspace.baseplate into debris this, alright, this, is the same thing as this. And what I'm going to put here is game, or task.wait, alright, I need to put the lifetime in here, so we have the item, and if you need to put the lifetime, which is Okay, so debris, adding the item and supplying the seconds is the same as waiting three seconds and also destroying it. So if I were to test this, okay, after three seconds, the base plate will be gone. And there you go, base plate's gone, right? That is the, this, same thing as saying test out, wait three seconds and then destroying it like this. But they just added a service for it so it can clean up your code. So again, waits three seconds, base plate's gone. Furthermore, if you were to uncomment this again and put in zero, you guys may may have guessed it, but it's, <laughs> it's the same thing as just saying destroy. All right, so debris, you can add the amount of seconds until something is destroyed without having to use test that way if you prefer using that in your scripts. Now, if you guys remember from earlier when I said that the debris service allows the developer to schedule the removal of an object without yielding any code, um, we're gonna get into this next and like what that actually means and uh, why it can be useful. So I have my game.workspace, you know, this debris, and I have a set to destroy after five seconds okay i have it set to destroy after five seconds let's get the run service to further explain this run service game get service run service and we just say run service a heartbeat and connect it and then print working what that yielding part is saying is that the code under this will still run even though this is on a wait okay so if you were to say task.wait three seconds 
and then say game.workspace.baseplate destroy. And then you have your run service stuff down here. This would weigh three seconds, but the stuff like the, the things under it will not run. Right? So I'm gonna show this. We're using debris that allows you that the code under it will still execute even while there is a a time counting down until it happens. So it's basically running on a new thread. So you don't have to make this into a task spawn type thing to run on a new thread because it automatically does it. Debris um, automatically does that so we can uh, test that now. Right, so if you guys don't know what a run service is in this heartbeat event, this will basically fire every frame that is uh, that is shown, that is executed, that is, um, well, I don't really, let's see what the word is, the, the frame that is fired, okay? So this will be running every frame, so like lots of times, right? So when you run the game, even though there is a wait going on of five seconds, it is still running the code under it, and after five seconds, the play space still disappears. So the code under it is still executing, again, even when there is a wait. All right, so this works for anything, like any loop. Let's say we have four i is equal to one comma three comma one do um, prints i, whoops, prints i, the loop is still gonna run. Again, just to show you guys. Oh, whoops, I actually closed it. But it says one, two, three. Um, so, and, and if you add anything, like print, okay, uh, it, it still runs. I don't, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you guys would get my point, but everything still runs perfectly, even with the weight. Why this is significant is because when you are not using debris and saying task.wait five seconds and running a loop, whoops, let me get run service again, my bad. Game, get service, run service, and I have to say the same thing. My bad, run service, the heartbeat, all that. Prints work, oh, working. Right, and we run this and comment debris for right now. Okay, five seconds. Oh, whoops, I forgot to get the deleting, not base plate, destroy. If you're using without debris and just actually waiting five seconds and then saying destroy we play the game we will see in the output that it is not executing the code um, while it is waiting for the countdown but um, it is executing it after because after the five seconds it can destroy the base plate and get to the code down here but using debris it allows all the code to run under it as well as keeping the uh, countdown. And if I were to use the example I was just using, like using the for loop, um, doing the, whoops, same loop. What is going on? Do print I and like do the print OK and all that. And we play the game. Nothing, oh, whoops. In the output, we will not see anything. It is actually waiting the, like, yielding the entire script until a uh, uh, wait is done and then it runs everything so debris can be useful if you still want to run the code under that without stopping the whole entire script because that can be a problem in many cases that is exactly why the task scheduler exists and why we can manipulate that with the um, task library so that can be really important Okay, guys, yeah, just an overview of what I talked about in the video. Destroy it immediately. You know, it, it immediately starts to destroy the object. Um, but if you want to add a weight to it, so it waits to, to destroy the object, then you can do that. But it yields the entire script. But debris, you can send in a weight value until you destroy an object. But that weight does not yield the script so that the rest of the script can be executed um, like I, I just showed before now again the same these are the same thing well, let me pull it up again so again here's my example this is the same thing as this um but 
the breed does not yield the code again. I want to enforce that because that can be important to whichever situation you are dealing with and what you are making. Keep that in mind. They are the same thing. The breed is the same thing as destroy and gets rid of all the things. But this runs immediately, so you would have to run a wait if you do not want it to run immediately. But that can also yield the script, so keep that in mind for whichever scenario is best for you. And yeah, guys, that was today's video. If you guys did learn something from this video, if you did get something from this video, or you guys just enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.